uh, the first thing I want to talk about is actually the web serving. So let's, uh, let's look at the internet today. Still, it consists of lots of static files, lots of pictures, scripts, and other things that we are uh, looking at all the time at most of the websites. You might think this is not too much to talk about, but the thing is, uh, this, there is a set of technologies and efficient delivery methods that larger organizations are using, and uh, that's how they're using the core Nginx technologies today. The smaller organizations are using uh, the same kind of approaches through the use of services like uh, CDNs and uh, different cloud providers. In addition to the uh, static web serving, we have lots of use cases, lots of use for uh, traffic management. There is, there is a lot there. We, uh, we talked about um, authentication, encryption, uh, DDoS protection uh, yesterday and today, and um, uh, load balancing, of course. And Nginx with Nginx Plus, uh, they are the great players in that area and provide you the tools and the ways uh, to run your traffic management and web serving um, all over the place. Right now, we'll also focus on the dynamic part of the, of the web applications, on the, on the application code and on uh, the challenges and uh, areas on where we can use uh, new technologies and Nginx technologies closer to the backend of the applications. So this is the part of the application platform uh, with the Nginx unit that works with uh, the web serving and um, application serving for various kinds of uh, um, monolithic and microservices applications of, uh, of different kind. And you might ask us, why did you build another application server? <laughs> well, uh, there are many reasons uh, that um, exist there, and I want to focus on the four on the screen. Today, the infrastructure is quite a bit different from what we had uh, years or decades ago. Uh, uh, in the days of yesterday, you were basically unpacking a server, uh, plugging in the cables, installing the system, and having all of that uh, put into the server rack, and that might have taken you days or weeks. Today, with the proliferation of uh, containers, cloud technologies, all of those server workloads are being created and modified on the fly in a matter of seconds. And in, in many cases, you're not even doing that yourself. Different scripts and tools are doing it for you. And uh, the other uh, issue that um, also uh, is apparent uh, right now is the, the, uh, the life of application and the use of different application stacks within the same kind of environment. There are many reasons for that. And uh, various languages and various platforms and frameworks, they do exist for, for their own reasons. Some tools are better than other tools uh, for one case, and the other tools may be, uh, may be better for some uh, specific applications. And all of those application stacks, they have to coexist. Now, the applications today, well, we, we talked a lot about microservices applications. And uh, the thing is, uh, the monolith uh, is not dead. And for many kinds of uh, apps, the larger monolithic applications, they make total sense. And the hybrid applications of the different deployment models, they also exist in the networks. And all of, all of those um, things, all of those applications, and uh, um, all of those different new kinds of infrastructure, they are now being managed by the new deployment methods, by uh, the DevOps teams that uh, not, haven't existed before, by the CI CD pipelines, by different orchestration systems. All of those things and um, all of those reasons, they require the software to, that runs your application to be quite a bit more modern and different. So we did uh, introduce UNIT last year at uh, this uh, conference. And um, what UNIT brought to us is an, um, a new way of looking at the application server. UNIT is dynamic, and it means that it has zero downtime on any changes that you perform to its configuration. Anything you do, there is no concept of reloading of UNIT. Next, it gives you now six languages that it can run applications in. You just give it the code written in PHP, Python, Perl, Go, 
or Ruby or today, or, or we even have Node.js available for you. This uh, brings an um, unprecedented level of consistency across the different application stacks. Unit also brings the isolation and scalability of application processes. And uh, this is really important for the larger environments of, on having uh, your application more secure, um, isolated from different other applications, and independently scalable uh, from one another. Unit is managed by an API. And there is no config file to edit anymore. There is a number of API calls you make directly to the unit server. And this brings a very easy, very simple to understand approach to manage any of your applications. And uh, there is another uh, great thing that is that unit is built using the same development culture and the same team that builds Nginx. This gives you the level of stability, performance, and lightweight operation that you already know really well across your uh, delivery infrastructure, across your load balancers, reverse proxies, and web servers. So we released Unit uh, as a beta about a year ago, and it took off really quickly. We are, on average, we are releasing about uh, one version a month. Um, and, and this is about the same frequency that we do uh, with uh, the Nginx so open source project. And uh, um, in April, we released the version 1.0 with lots of uh, hardening uh, security. And um, uh, we added more application languages that we did uh, with, the f uh, with the first beta. And other things that we added by April were related to more um, dynamic process management, the scaling of application processes. And right now, in October 2018, Unit is at version 1.4, where we added dynamic SSL TLS certificates. You now are able to have um, security everywhere across your, uh, across your application stack. And in the Unit side, it's really easy to change and replace SSL certificates without any concept of reloading any of the processes. You just give, them, uh, give the software the, uh, the API call with new SSL certs, and that becomes uh, available immediately. Right now, our team is working um, on uh, support for uh, the next application language, which is going to be Java. And we will update you on the progress on that uh, immediately as uh, that is available. So th uh, this, is, this is really great progress. And the thing I want to focus on at, at this point is, uh, is this picture. And it shows you how different kinds of application, how completely different application languages and platforms can be consistently configured using the same approach, using the same API. Well, obviously, some of the application parameters will be different, but the way you access them, and the way you do that, you now don't need to edit a number of different configuration file parameters. You just have a one same kind of API call. So the thing is, um, it's all me talking about it, but there is something more interesting uh, we, can, we can see here. And what I want to do is I want to have uh, one of our early uh, users of Nginx uh, unit here on stage. And um, uh, this, this is going to be uh, Timo Stark from Audi, uh, who will talk about um, the ways how Nginx unit is currently working in his environments. And um, yeah, at this point, please welcome Timo on stage. Mm -hmm. All right, funny. Yeah, Timo, welcome. Yes. So, uh, yesterday, you gave a very nice talk about uh, how uh, you use different microservices applications. And um, uh, the crowd here enjoyed your talk. And uh, whoever didn't uh, have a chance to see it, uh, we will have the videos and the slides available really soon. But the things that we want to talk uh, right now about, they're related to N Nginx unit and your application code. So can you tell us how you use Nginx unit today? Yes, yeah, so Nginx unit um, replaced a couple of different things. Um, the journey started with a couple of microservices or even APIs based on PHP. Um, and 
the very early ones, we created some Nginx instances and PHP FPMs on two virtual machines and run all the APIs on these two VMs based on PHP. Um, but it turned out that especially the different APIs need a couple of fine tuning that was related to the PHP FPM part. So that ended up in a couple of Nginx workers on that, or processes on that instances with a couple of PHP FPM sockets, each socket for an other API. So they work great, but it's a mess for configuration. Um, so then the journey walked to um, containers and Kubernetes. So I put anything I had, the, the PHP FPM and Nginx in a Docker container and pushed that to a Kubernetes cluster. So they worked as well, but this container size was around 600, 750 megs per container. Um, and then last year, in, or this year in April, um, I used the official released um, unit application server for PHP, um, and the size of the Docker container was right now just the 200 meg. So it was less than a third of um, mm -hmm. my current size of the container image. Um, and I put these APIs into the uh, unit application mm -hmm. web server container with the PHP support. Um, that turned out that it was a very, very good solution for us because the container size was just a 200 meg per container. Um, and even if you want to customize specific parameters for the PHP part in unit, you can absolutely do this. Or even more, you can just download the source code and can do some configurations on your own, compile it, make it, and use this binary as a base for your new container. This is, this is really amazing. Uh, so we, uh, we just now announced a number of new features for Unit, a number right. of things that we are um, supporting and going to support really soon. So what do you find uh, you will be using uh, more, and where you will uh, move this configuration further? So um, the best feature for me in, in the 1.4 release is the dynamic TLS certificate reloading, um, because we have a lot of other APIs and a couple of APIs written in Go. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, Go has its own built-in, like let's say, web server. So, but you can't change the certificate on that server without reloading the process. So mm -hmm. you have a downtime, potentially. Um, and I'll try the unit 1.4 release with the dynamic TLS certificate loading to put this API written in Go in unit and change the certificates without um, shut down the, the container or without restarting the container. Yeah. So this is something I really want to use. This is really amazing. We will be in touch and we'll see uh, how this development uh, is progressing. Of course. So th thank you. Thanks, thank you, Nick. Thanks. Thanks. Enjoy the thank conference. <laughs> So this is really great uh, to see how our community is um, uh, picking up on the new technology and uh, making a great use of that. And um, what, what we are waiting from the community to, uh, to do is also to share that feedback with us, to uh, give us uh, more uh, ways and understanding how you are using these new technologies in uh, the different varieties on your environment. So many of, um, the, uh, of the great new projects uh, for uh, Nginx are led and built directly by our founder. So at this point, I want to welcome on stage uh, Igor Sisoyev, uh, the founder of Nginx, to talk more about the application plane and about the ways how application is um, going to run in, uh, in the environments. So let's welcome Igor Sisoyev on stage. Welcome, Igor. Uh, so currently, which projects at Nginx uh, you are running and uh, mostly busy with? Uh, currently, I am working uh, mostly on Unit and NJS. So NJS is really uh, interesting. So let's talk a little bit more about it. What's, what's, what's NJS is about? NJS is our implementation of JavaScript language, uh, which can be used with, uh, in Nginx configuration. So the thing is, there are many uh, different scripting implementations, and they existed for a while, even before you started building NJS. Why did you build your own implementation of JavaScript there? Uh, 
Um, I believe that uh, JavaScript is uh, the most popular language right now, and uh, it will be popular in the next decade. Uh, it uh, has quite easy uh, syntax, and uh, a lot of people use it. And uh, we decided to uh, develop our own implementation of JavaScript because the current uh, implementations from Google, Mozilla, Apple uh, are optimized to use in browsers, but not in servers. So the thing is, there are many different possibilities of uh, using Nginx in the configuration plane. What do people use uh, NJS for? What kind of use cases? Uh, people can use, for example, for custom authentication with uh, cryptographic hashes. Uh, or uh, you can define variables that choose uh, with some complex algorithm uh, the upstream servers. Or, for example, you can send even a request to several upstreams and choose the fastest one response from the uh, fastest response from the server. Mm -hmm. But uh, in many cases, I, I saw before how some of our users uh, took a lot of scripting inside of the configuration, and they basically created apps within the Nginx config. And looks like NJS is going to be uh, quite extensive, so people will be able to build apps for that. What do you say? Yeah, but it's, uh, if you develop full-scale applications, it's better to use Unit, because Unit is more suitable for this. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Unit, uh, what would you mention there as uh, the, main, uh, the main things ab about this new project? Uh, from my point of view, the main feature of Unit is dynamic reconfigurations, uh, remote, uh, remote configurations uh, with JSON files. And the second is um, the second feature is um, uh, consistent configurations, uh, mostly independent of language which you use. This is really nice. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see you here at the conference. And um, um, all the attendees can talk to Igor uh, today and uh, share their uh, use of the scripting technologies and unit. So um, Igor, thank you so much for, you. Uh, for participating. Yeah. <laughs>